in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I am lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Here's the prayer Open the eyes of my heart, Lord It's a real prayer Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Two men were with the resurrected Christ on the way to Emmaus. Just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter. You can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things you are growing they were with Jesus and yet did not recognize him but the Bible says when the bed was broken their eyes opened can you pray whilst you are seated Lord open my eyes let this be a journey of transformation let this be a journey of growth please pray hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so for tonight just spare me a few minutes and we're done listen week in week out when you come did you know why we pray that God should bring people we don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd it's more than that it's a passion to reach as many people there are 3.2 million people demographically speaking in this city if we are unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we are wasting your time and we are wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe it. So, when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor. You can scan through his life. While he comes to say, my life, you can see the spiritual gaps. You, you know the laws he's breaking in an instant. And you know if God does not help this man, just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem. Because the truths that this person needs to learn are many. It is on the, that is what sponsors your compassion. When you draw someone to the house of God, you are already excited. Because more than an instant miracle, he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth. So he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding. And he will thank you for it. While the word of God is coming, he can see the gaps in his life. There is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men. It's the grace that causes all men to see. So you can see your life in light of this truth. And you can say, wow, I now see why my church is not growing. It's not because I'm not from this city. I now see this may be what I may be doing wrong. And then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You are not ashamed of God exposing your area of growth. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. And you receive it with truth. Then you go back like the foxes of Samson. And you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom this is what I seek by the Spirit of God that will happen in our lives that week in let me tell you the truth I give you a guarantee if you come here week in week 
out and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth, I am wasting your time. Please look for something important and do with your life. Are we together? Many times we teach that all you need, one encounter with the word is all you need. That's a very sincere statement, but that's incomplete. Many people have encountered the word for many years. It is the truth that is accurately taught that you receive with understanding and you engage appropriately that produces for you. Not the truth available. Access to truth does not transform. No. It must be accurately taught. Then it must be understood. Then it must be received by faith. The principles contained therein applied diligently. Then you can commit God's integrity to perform. Hallelujah. Let's talk about spiritual growth tonight. Let's start from there. We're, we're starting from the very foundation. This is a new work. And so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us. If we're together, say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Please let's rush. We have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight. And then we pray. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. We're discussing the subject of spiritual growth. Please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside. Ready? Read. When I was a child, uh -huh, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Please keep that scripture there. Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth, part of his apostolic ministry, and he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom. That you know a child, number one, by how you speak you know a child number two by your level of spiritual understanding are we together you know a child by your thought process because your life is a reflection of your thoughts so we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man the way that you speak your degree of comprehension and the way you think the way you process spiritual things when I was a child he said this also talks about transition. When I was, once upon a time he was a child. This is a very powerful message because it means men can grow. It's a, it's a revelation. I can come out of my former self into a new version of me. That means the version you saw last week. While you are talking about that one, I have grown. You are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick. You are talking about the version that is ignorant. And that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom. Very powerful. So you can see one who is weak. He may even come out for salvation prayer. And you watch that person and you are like, wow. When is this guy going to understand spiritual things? Just give the person the atmosphere of growth. And sometimes as little as weeks. Under a very correct system of growth. You will be surprised. What will happen to that person? When I was a child, I spoke like a child, understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, what happened? I pushed childish things, childish speaking, childish understanding, childish thinking. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Write this down, please. Growth refers to increase in size, increase in capacity, increase in convictions, increase in resources growth refers to increase of all kinds increase in size for instance increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources god expects believers to grow the bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow God desires that we grow biologically. God desires that we grow intellectually. God desires that we grow career-wise for career people. God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on. But for this, for tonight, the subject of focus is spiritual growth. 
Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus grew or he increased. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased, the Bible says. Jesus, your Jesus, had to grow. He increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. Write this down, please. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Not necessarily. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010, the, the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth. Listen to this. Jesus is speaking to the scribes. He says, woe to you lawyers. For you have taken the key of knowledge. You've been here for a long time. You have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering. Most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call. And you hear people say things like, I have been a Christian for 20 years. Now that's worth, being, uh, that's worth um, our applause. I'm not downplaying it. But I'm saying just because you gave your life to Christ, it's like someone who bought a car in 2000, and just because a car is in his house, he tells you he's a driver. No. The presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Write this point again. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. That means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities, it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually paul was teaching his son timothy doctrine and he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth wow preach preacher wow wonderful and just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time just because you've been around crusades you've been around great programs when they say, who are those who have been in church for a long time, you will stand up. But when we look through your life, we do not see the indices that represent spiritual growth. Is God helping us? There is a tragedy. Please look up. There is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth. If you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit, you will not aspire for higher dimensions. Because you see, many times, and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we're exposed to, many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into God. It's like the most important thing is to give your life to Jesus, like we say. And the moment you have received Jesus, that's all right. After all, whatever it is, it is heaven. There are severe consequences for remaining at that level. Biologically speaking, mothers, when you give birth to a child, you don't flog that child from day one for not walking. You give him some allowance. But after a year, two years, three years, you find out your child cannot walk, your child cannot talk, that becomes a medical issue. Is that true? I have put down here three, three tragedies that will befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth. Please walk with me. Let's hurry up. Is God blessing us tonight? Number one, the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened, Look up, please. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Do you know what this means? That means even though you have received the Zoe life, watch this, you have received the life of God, 
it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically the riches of that which you have received that resides in Christ is released through knowledge and if you do not contend for spiritual growth you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life so two believers come this is my great generals just come close to me by the way this is Sam ladies and gentlemen for many of you you've heard me say Sam and those of you who have been blessed by the song you reign Elohim here's the person who wrote the song thank you hallelujah now watch this let me have your attention again watch this now did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time are we together filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time but this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system and five years down the line you will see the quality of his Christian experience all wise you will see that the reality the riches the, the, the manifestation of that life that he has so received. When you look at it, you will see the quality of his life. This man, even though truly he's given his life to Christ, you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of Christ in his life. The difference is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth. Whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion. Decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to grow spiritually. So the potential, the potential that this life of God that we have, this divine life is released as we grow. If you do not grow, it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life. But nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in Christ. Are we together? Tragedy number two. What happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth? Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Now I say that an heir, an heir means a partaker of a throne, a, a a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be Lord of all look up please the Bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of Christ and not contending for growth, your results will not change. The dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in Christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, 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 oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. We're reading to verse 14, verse 12 now. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 13. For everyone that useth milk, everyone that is a child, is what? Unskillful. Look up. Let me explain what this means to you. 
When you watch a consultant, when he looks at a patient, while the patient is talking, all of a sudden, the, the myriads of medical truths that he knows, everything is working in an instant. He looks at this and says, oh, I remember. There, we have one in a million of these cases. However, I think I know what to do about it. On the strength of his mastery. A student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited so he can do his best although he's a doctor in the making he can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much this is what it means to be unskillful so if you do not grow spiritually you can't be a blessing because when people speak to you you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them so you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better and the bible says you are unskillful you are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery when you grow spiritually if a family calls you as a man of god we're in trouble what is the trouble all doors are closed uh -huh, immediately the scriptures that will bail them out comes to you. You can almost tell them, I know what is wrong. I know what is wrong. It's powerful to know how to help people. Not just how to sympathize with people. You are a blessing to the degree to which you can help. Someone comes to you now and says, I hear that you are a member of this great ministry. Nothing is working in my life. Delays. There is there's no restoration. The moment you hear restoration, you know all through scripture, everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back. So restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic. So you don't just tell that person, let's pray. God help him. That's a careless prayer. You seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice. They are taken for a prey and none say it. Restore. This is what it means to be skillful. Someone comes to you and says, I am gifted. I'm a graduate, but doors are not opening up. I have a business. And you know exactly what is there. Because you see, James 2.26 said, a body without a spirit is dead. The business is a body. Where is the spirit that gives it life? So you know what to introduce. Are you getting blessed? If you refuse to grow spiritually, you become unskillful. You cannot help yourself and you cannot help people. This is the tragedy with the poor. It's responsible for what outcome. Mastery in the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes. So when you see people and they cry, you know what spiritual law to help them with. Like a doctor, when a patient says, I'm running temperature and um, I've not been able to eat, I even threw up. You are not a doctor, but help me guess what you think is wrong. Who taught you that although you are not a doctor notice you did not say Ronnie's stomach but don't you know that cholera he also vomits why didn't you say cholera because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this this is how to help the person this can happen to you spiritually listen to me I'm teaching you this so after the grace, some of you will run home and say, come, I found what the problem is. I know exactly why this family is not rising. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With accuracy, you can know. When mama comes to say, are you seeing this? I went to bed and I had a dream. I saw someone speaking to me and he said in this family for the last hundred years nobody has risen. And everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them. What is the excellency of your spiritual investment? But the issue is not just saying let's pray, don't mind the devil. You say that thing you will die like a chicken. Because many people have arrogantly made bold claims. Don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush. If you have not seen the burning bush, leave Pharaoh alone. Your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina. You can stand before Pharaoh and say, Thus say yet not me, the one I met. Let my people go. Because Pharaoh is stubborn. God does not hide the fact that Pharaoh is stubborn. He will say, Oh, God spoke, go. Mm -mm. He will say, Who is that? You have to show him a token. 
of your encounter that I really met him. So you don't talk like people who are not born again. When believers are lamenting, what is wrong? You go to scripture. What are the truths? The assignment of men of God is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals on the strength of that you can now go if you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say except i am not this you will not rise you don't need to start talking as if you are not born ah, mm, mm, mm. I leave him in peace that man you see you should even be beating him while he's speaking based on what you know if you actually engage what you know you know that it will cause more destruction for that man so you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness listen sit down please don't be excited for nothing look at me this is how dominion is produced dominion is not just an impartation is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom you surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots they make you a wonder to behold so when you say you are matured in the spirit it's not just by physical stature it's not by the huskiness of the voice it's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together you have fine-tuned them they are like weapons of war you shoot them with the accuracy of the benjamites one sling and goliath goes down low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory Cover us with your wings. No, 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 like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Please sit down. Is God helping us? Yes. So, all of the dimensions that we seek to walk in in the kingdom. They have a body of spiritual truth that is responsible for their lifting you are a blessing only when you move with these truths they follow you listen the Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe Do you know what that means when I see what is following you it's a report card to what you believe So when I see favor and open doors following you, they are not following you. They are following what you believe. If you want to drive them, don't ask them to go. Change what you believe. They will leave. There are many things we do not want in our lives. You don't drive them by saying, leave me. They are we're designed to honor that belief. If you take it out of your life, they will leave you with it. hallelujah let's wrap up tonight indices to measure spiritual growth let me give you four spiritual indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth pray in the spirit in one minute as you are seated four indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth thank you Jesus ah. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. Someone's life is changing, my goodness. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. To the God of all flesh, you're my God and
please sit down. Now, please let me have your attention. We are about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit. And with it, challenge ourselves. Let me give you an advice. Never be ashamed when the word of God comes. Sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame. When Minister Frecker was here, he said we should lift our hands like children. That is the attitude. He said, let the little children come to me. He says, do not forbid them for, for such. The kingdom of God requires childlike approach. I come to you with my heart open. And he vets you in light of his truth. Then you will read. Repentance is not a word for sinners. It's the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns. It's called repentance. Number one, the first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom, write it please, is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience. Of Jesus experientially or in experience Colossians chapter 1 chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 oh dear let's see if we can hurry up and just walk on these scriptures Colossians 1 verse 3 it says if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God keep reading verse 2 it says set your affections he's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life set your affection something about your affection reveals your level of growth set your affection on things above he never said don't have the things of the earth but set your affection when your obsession becomes on money on titles on I must make it I must achieve it it is good to aspire to be great but if that's what controls your heart you are far from growth set your affection let's hurry up on things above not on things of the earth verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God verse 4 very quickly I'll run through it it says when Christ who is our life shall appear then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory uh-huh now mortify therefore your members that means you have a responsibility mortify your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil what's that word and covetousness which is idolatry verse verse 6 it says for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience seven in the which ye also walk in some time when ye lived in them eight but now put off all these believers are we together maybe you should read the rest from here one anger number two number three number four number five nigerians repeat number five dear wonderful citizens of this great country reveal try number five again Number verse 9. La, hi, ah, do I say this one now? <laughs> Don't worry, we are together. God is helping us. We are growing in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. And have put on a new man. Hallelujah. That new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. We are reading to 15. Where there is neither Yoruba, nor Hausa, nor South South, nor Northerner, nor Middle Beltan. It says, but Christ is all and in all. Let me tell you this. You really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory. It shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Then he helps you to accurately get where you are coming from. It is proof that you are not transformed. You should be so transformed 
we, we, should be, we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory. That when you tell people where you are coming from, they say it's not true. How come you are so refined? You tell them the process is called growth. Growth. Called out of every tribe and tongue and nation into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory. Let's finish up the scripture. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, uh -huh, bowels of mercy, uh -huh, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. It says, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye, 14. It says, above all these things, put on love. Charity there is love. He calls it the bond of maturity, the zenith of your maturity. We're coming there. 15, the last verse. It says, and let the peace of God garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body. And in all that you do, do not forget to be thankful. So ingratitude is proof that you are a child. Are we blessed? Write this scripture. We may not read it. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. It tells us we can add to our faith certain spiritual qualities. It says, add to your faith virtue. Virtue means moral excellence. Add to virtue knowledge. Since they projected it, let's just read on verse 6. Add to knowledge self-control or temperance. Add to self-control patience. Add to patience godliness. 7. Add to godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness love. This love thing again. Is God helping us? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, popular scripture and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. While I was studying for this meeting, if we can have it, um, if we can have it, give us the Passion Translation. Is that possible? The Passion Translation. Very powerful. The Passion Translation. If, if we can't get that, that that's all right. The Passion Translation. It puts it in a very, very exceptional and interesting way. That's all right. You can, you can just give us the version we have if the Passion Translation is not there. But it's, it's really very powerful. I just thought that if we look at it... Um, okay, yeah, let's just go back to King James. Apologize for that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Passion Translation says... The, the, it says, the fruit which the Holy Spirit walks out through a recreated human spirit is love expressed in its various forms. Then it now begins to say joy, peace. Very, very powerful. Are we together? But let's work with what we have. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit, that means the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in a recreated human spirit is love, and um, in its, the original translation is not just love, joy, peace. It's just love, one word, love. But that that love expresses itself in joy. Are we together? Peace. So joy is a subset of love. Peace is a subset of love. Long-suffering or patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. 23. Meekness, temperance. It says, against such, there is no law. There is no prohibition to walking in this. Your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ. When people look at you, they should remember Jesus, not you. The more they see you, you should be the clearest representation of Jesus that they can see. Not by preaching. Something about the dexterity of the formation of Christ in you should make people desire Jesus. Are we together? It is my prayer all the time that Christ be formed in me. The formation of Christ. It is my prayer that I will not just be a man of God who is preaching, 
but that at least my life becomes a worthy representation that you can look at your life and say my god this man truly is a reflection of jesus it's a noble comment it's more than saying you're a successful man you are beautiful That's what happens when you become like him. You are beautiful in all your ways. Character. We must trust God by the grace of God to be men and women of solid character. If your preaching is the only thing that reveals you as a Christian, you are not a solid Christian. If your seed is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, if your praying in tongues is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, something is wrong. Look at those who follow Jesus. Even when they tried to deny him, they had been so transformed. They looked at them and said, no, no, no. You are lying that you don't know him, but th there is something. Can you be that transformed that no matter how you pretend, someone will say, Kai, it looks like you are a pastor. You say, well, I, I'm just, I'm just, they say, no, 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 no. Men shall call you ministers of our God. That in your office, the moment they want to bribe, as soon as you enter the stop, you don't say anything, you don't judge. Blessings to everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. Your presence becomes such an inconvenience to darkness. Character. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you. My heart, my life, and everything that I have. It all belongs to you. Let's hurry up. We're wrapping up. Number two, the second biblical index to measure your spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. Index number two, your depth of comprehension your depth of knowledge, your depth of understanding of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. The degree to which you have an understanding of the principles that govern this kingdom is the degree to which you are matured spiritually. Look up please. The Bible says in Matthew 25 when you read from verse 14, the parable of the talents. I'll just pick one or two things there. Give us verse 14, please. Matthew 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, watch this, and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. It says he gave unto one, how many talents? Help me, five talents. Number two to the other, two talents. And then the third one. It says, Unto every man according to his several ability. He did not give them according to his love for them. Meaning that he had watched them for a while. And the end of the story shows he was correct. Because the man with five was the most responsible. The, one, the man with five had a lot to fight. He had pride to fight. Being the one with the highest talent, he overcame pride and was still focused and diligent. The man with two had jealousy to fight. Because knowing there was somebody above him, he conquered jealousy and still produced that. The man with one, you bury seeds, not talents. And he buried the, the talent and came. You can see that he was already offended. When they asked for him, he says, you are a hard man. You like reaping where you didn't sow. And so I thought to even pity you, I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, you are a wicked, number one, Number two, unprofitable servant. Hallelujah. God gives unto men according to their ability that has come from their growth. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able 
to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Here's the scripture. Not according to his power, according to the power that works in us. The dam brings water, but the, the amount of water that ends up in your bucket is according to the size of the tap, not according to the potential of the dam. You can turn your tap just once and it will be a drop and it will take you almost a day to have a bucket full. Is that true? And someone can turn the tap very fast and within a minute, the bucket is full. The problem is not the dam. The dam has the potential to fill as many buckets according to the power that works in us, the capacity. The day I found this, I found out that the limitation in the dispensing of the grace of God is not just God's problem. There is something about my capacity that needs to be built so that I can host superior dimensions of his presence and it became my pursuit to enlarge. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. Jesus lamented two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible. Number one was at John Lazarus' tomb when he wept because of his compassion. Second was this over Jerusalem. Three reasons I meant to say. See the third, well, he, the Bible says he cried, he was sweat, but it was like drops of blood. It says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? 42. Saying, if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, it says, but now they are hid from your eyes. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That's the original translation. If you had known, even in this your time, the things that pertain to your peace, peace there means your wholeness, but now they are hid from your eyes. We must contend for spiritual truth. Listen to me. We must contend for dimensions of truth that equip us and help us to be matured to manifest the fullness of the life and the power of God. Number three, the third biblical index that measures spiritual growth, write it down, is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life. We know that you are matured to the degree to which we can see the tangible manifestation of the power and the ability of the spirit in your life. The outworkings of the ability of the spirit of God in your life. Please write this down. I think I confused two scriptures. Let me give you a scripture that had to do with depth of comprehension. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20. It says, be not children in understanding. I'm seeing two scriptures I omitted here. Be not children in understanding. 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Be not children in understanding. Write it down, please. Then write down Colossians 1 verse 9. The Bible says Paul was praying over the church in Colossae. That's over point two now. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, wisdom and spiritual understanding hallelujah the outworkings of his power in your life second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible says but in a great house look at me please it is not the vessels that make the house great it is the builder even though there are all kinds of vessels it's still called a great house but in a great house please keep the scripture there it says There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of clay. He said some vessels are destined unto honor. Some vessels are unto dishonor. What is the condition? Verse 2. If a man will purge himself from this, prune yourself from this, you shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Let me tell you this. By the grace of God, I know a bit about the power of God. I know a bit about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have seen the power and the grace of God. I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing. I can tell you this. The vessel 
is a very important subject as far as impartation and the administration of spiritual power is concerned the vessel can make the oil look small in second kings chapter 4 the woman who was owing her husband died the bible says the prophet came and said what do you have in your house she said nothing that little jar that could feed her was listening to the conversation too because the anointing is a living thing so the anointing was hearing and saying you are calling me small and the prophet said you don't know the problem is not the oil the problem is the kind of vessel holding it go and borrow vessels expand he said borrow not a few when she borrowed it now said to pour the oil the oil began to multiply to assume the shape of the vessel the anointing will only be as effective as the maturity of the vessel administering it the outworkings of the power of God there has to come a time in your life whether you are in ministry or not active ministry like we know you cannot remain with God growing spiritually truly and then get to a point where the outworkings of the power of God is not visible in your life it's impossible someday you should be able to speak over someone and his and doors change someday you should be able to come into your family help him please there has to be the reality listen to me please if you're a man of god here let me tell you it's not all about power manifestation but there has to be a, an investment of the spirit upon your life there must be a signature of the spirit Then your world become like the words of God. That lady wearing black. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. Yes. That lady looking at me. I stretch my hands right now. Something is happening to you. Help her please. I'm seeing oil being poured on her. This is what happens. This is the place of encounter. one testimony that was shared here was produced by the power of the Holy Spirit 
your Bible says his divine power it says according as his divine power hath given us the giver is his divine power if you stand and watch doors like that you will watch it forever you will need to obtain power from on high Samson remained helpless provided there was no power but when grace came upon his life you see so when you come to church like this don't see this strange is it not written in your Bible that well Peter yet speak these things it says the Holy Ghost fell on them that had him so you go back home with an experience and like the psalmist you can say I was glad when they said to me let us go how could your life remain the same my brothers and my sisters it's impossible not the God of the Bible the power of the Holy Ghost I believe in power I've had the opportunity in ministry to see what power can do to lives political careers it takes power to enthrone kings this is not just prophecy when you speak there must be grace that backs it I am a man under authority the centurion said and I can tell one go and he goeth the power is and he goeth not that I said go I said go and he goeth come and he cometh so you say open and it opens close and it closes listen may grace come on your life this night that many of you will return back home and in the name of Jesus you will stand I'm speaking by the Spirit help them please I decree and declare you will go back home like the foxes of Samson carrying supernatural power power to dislodge the workings of darkness in the name of help that woman please in the mighty name of Jesus Christ please sit down we're wrapping up can I speak to you everything that has refused to work by this time next week I stand by the Spirit and the grace of God in the name of Jesus I command it to begin to walk I speak by the Spirit of God help help that woman please every response you should receive you heard their testimonies I stand by the road of a higher priesthood every frustration over over your destiny I release you from it now Please sit down. We're wrapping up. This is Koinonia. Number four. The fourth and the last index for measuring your spiritual growth is called your love life. We're wrapping up. Pali Selema Shola Haskabranda Gaduziaka. I'm opening doors opening doors that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying I'm opening doors you will think I'm joking but you'll be surprised to see what happens I'm opening doors this is what God is saying I said before you he says an open door that no man can shut I'm opening doors this God speaking to someone I don't know who that person is but you came here with hunger I stand by the grace from heaven and I declare those doors those doors be open for the sake of his majesty be open be open in the name of Jesus please sit down help that woman please please sit down we're wrapping up listen to me please next week don't come to church alone don't come to church alone don't leave your loved ones behind no even if they will sit on the roof let them sit there one encounter with the power of God can open ages chapters that have been closed hallelujah we're wrapping up we have about 10 minutes and we're done for tonight please be patient with me listen please the fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth according to scripture is your love life when you read first John chapter 4 
this is a very important subject your love life madam that woman come no 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 you please you don't have to stand up at random where are you coming from what's your name I'm hearing a name of Fayemi. What's your name? Of Fayemi. The Lord is saying I should tell you this week coming. This week you see coming. From Monday tomorrow. You will come and stand here. The way doors will open in your life. It will surprise you. I stretch my hands and I bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You drink of this grace and you return back with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Let's finish up. First John chapter 7. Chapter 4, please. Chapter 4 from verse 7. Let's hurry up, please. We're wrapping up. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Verse 8. It says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Keep verse 8. But the text is down to 21. It says, whoever does not love, it is proof that you don't know God. No matter how you convince yourself. Something about your love life. If you love God and hate men, you are not born again. Many people love Jesus only because they can't see him. If they see Jesus for one week, he will join all those they have hated. Love. I love him with all my heart. Let me tell you this. One of the secrets to the grace of God upon my life is not just prayer and fasting alone. It is sincere love. God has given me that grace and it's been a prayer. Lord, may I not use people. May I not use members to make a name. Let, let them see the passion, the love. That whilst you are sleeping, I'm praying for you and I'm saying, Lord, lift them. Open doors for them. Huh? Not just coming to collect, coming in. To bless. My greatest joy is not my lifting. My greatest joy is your rising. Hallelujah your love life John 13 and verse 35 by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you preach well not when you share revelations 13 35 John by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another the first core value help that lady the first core value in this ministry it's not power, it's love. Love is very powerful. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31. Very interesting scripture as we seek to wrap up. Very powerful scripture. Never forget this for the rest of your life. Haven't discussed the manifestation, the gifts of the spirit. As charismatic as they are, it says, but covet earnestly the best gift. And yet, I show you after prophecy after word of knowledge after healing i show you a more excellent way 13 verse 1 what is the more excellent way the way to do it in love though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love i am become as a sounding brass oh dear i wish we can get the voice or that well for next time i'm sure that our media will help us with that I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal it says verse 2 let's go to verse 2 now it says if I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries if you become this man people will look for you till they kill you you know all mysteries and prophecy and you have all knowledge you have all faith you can move mountains but you do not have love it says I am nothing Look how little we weigh in the spirit without love. In the physical, they can be clapping Apostle Joshua Selman. But in the realm of the spirit, you weigh so small. Verse 3. The Bible says, 
if I donate all my goods to feed the poor, I give my body to be burned, and I do not have love. He says, I gain nothing. Verse 4. Let's hurry up, please. Love is patient if it is true love. Love is kind if it is true love. Love does not envy. Nigerians, love is not boastful. It is not conceited. Verse 5. It says, does not act improperly. Love is not selfish. It's not easily provoked or easily angered. Does not keep a record of wrongs. Hmm. Verse 6. It says, finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Seven, we're almost there. It says, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse eight, this is the love you talk about. Love never fails. Now we can go back to KJV so that we can wrap it up. It says, verse nine, for we know in part, love never fails. Listen to my message, love never fails. Business people, if the Bible tells you there is something that does not fail, look for it. That means whatever is failing, add love to it. It will change the equation. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. The most accurate of us is still limited. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. My goodness, verse 9. He says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is imperfect shall go away. 11, he says, when I was a child, back to our scripture now, let's go to verse 12. We've read that, we have to rush. He says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but face to face we know in part, then we shall even know as we are known. 13, and now. There abided faith that moves mountains. If you have faith in today's world, you are a great mountain mover. If you have hope, there is no shame for you. Because hope has a way of eroding shame. It says, and of these three, the greatest is love. The greatest is not power. The greatest is not signs and wonders. The greatest is not prophecy and revelatory gifts. The, pro the greatest is not accuracy of the exegesis of doctrine. Those things are wonderful. But according to divine rankings, the zenith of your transformation is not knowledge, it's love. Love. It is my desire that more than preaching, that I will truly become a lover of God and a lover of men to love men to love men sincerely you are not spiritually growing to the degree to which you pile hate in your heart you have all kinds of black books no no tonight may be a word from the lord and say look you need to pack up that nonsense you need to be light to fly when you are heavy these weights press you down it says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, right? And the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to grant us grace to desire growth from the depth of your heart. God is training us God is building us. Please rise up on your feet. Two prayer points tonight very quickly. Prayer point number one. Father, grant me the grace. The grace to grow intentionally. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Inside, outside, lift your voice and pray. The grace to grow intentionally. I am tired of this level in the spirit. I desire to grow. From today, I make my spiritual growth an intentional pursuit. There is a lot that depends on my growth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. Father, grant me the grace to reveal Jesus from today through my life.
through all of these dimensions. Are we together now? Through my character, through the dexterity of my spiritual understanding, through the outworkings of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life, and by the demonstration of love, let men see Christ, exalted Christ, revealed in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Those outside pray, overflows pray, following online, lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm about to make the altar call. Please be patient. There are a few very important announcements I need to communicate before we wrap up for tonight. But there are people here listening. Some of you came here, you were invited. Some of you are in the overflows. Some outside, some following online from whatever nation. And you're saying, Apostle, hearing you speak, I cannot for sure say that Jesus is Lord of my life. I have a desire for him, but I don't seem to have truly found him. Others are saying, one time I gave my life to Jesus, but as it is now, my life has gone haywire and I need to bring my life back to order. These two categories of people. Now, for all of the overflows and outside, you just move to your projector screen and then those in the main auditorium, I'd like you to run and come and stand here. It will be my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus. I'll count one to five. Please, I'd like you to come. One. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Come to Jesus. God bless you. Win that war tonight. Win that war tonight. Win that war. God bless you. Keep coming. Don't be ashamed of anyone. No one condemns you. This is a house of love. Come. 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 He's giving you a new beginning. Come. All overflows. Move to your overflows. Look at these our wonderful children. Let's celebrate them. Come. Come. Minister Freke taught us, and he said, if he's not in his presence, and if it is not by his hand, if it is not by his word, it's not just don't let me have it. You really can't have it. You have decided to follow Jesus. No time no turning back. You have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. If ever you were saved, there was your name. If you were lost, your name was there. There's nothing like being in between. No. If you are not saved, you are not saved. If you are not sure, you are not saved. I salute every single one of you. Listen, until the day Jesus comes, we will never stop participating in the global harvest. We must see to it that souls come to Jesus every day. Someday when we're in heaven, we're going to see these blessed people and they will look at us and say, thank God. Thank God for clapping for me while I came. For I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. My dear ones, look at me. We're standing before Jesus, not just Joshua Selma. Those following online, those in the overflows, let there be someone there to guide them. I want to lead you to make this most noble prayer. It's greater than receiving an award. It's greater than receiving an employment letter. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. This is the security of your eternal destiny. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Pray this from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. 
one more time say Lord Jesus I love you I have heard your word tonight I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in exchange be my Savior be my Lord be my King forever I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness I reign in life amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these precious ones they have become by their confession members of the family of heaven and it's an honor to welcome them to this family that so represents your voice and your counsel at this side of your kingdom I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit may you become mighty men and women of the spirit and I pray that the Lord himself will do wonders in and through your life in the name of Jesus Christ thank you very much now very quickly there's a counselor there are counselors waving a placard for you all of you I want you to please move in concert just follow um, the counselors celebrate them as they go celebrate them as they go bless you darlings thank you hallelujah praise the Lord now please listen just some very important announcements I have to work dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline